I'd like to go into a topic and, and delve a little bit into an explanation of something that may have at times been confusing. And that topic is park properties and instances and usages and definitions and these terms that you may have heard and, and somewhat scratched your head and, and wondered what that really means. So looking at this very simple architecture, what you see is that in this case, we have a car and we're saying that this car has, that part of the car is a wheel. And that wheel is defined by this block and that is the wheel block. So a few things are happening here. If we look at the containment tree, what we see is there's a part property and that part property is typed by the wheel. You're seeing the, the part property name here. You're seeing the type is the capital wheel in this case. Understanding that a block is an element of definition, what you could do with that is actually add things to further define that such as the wheel size, or you could say the diameter, for instance. And let's say this is in inches. And then we'll say for a default value, we have 20 inches is the wheel's default. So now that is a, a way to further define this wheel. And currently we're saying that this car has one wheel. But what if the car had more wheels? Well, those instead of creating new blocks for each of those wheels such as something like this where we would try to say it has another wheel you'll see a conflict and you'll see that there is a conflict with the existing block called wheel because you can only define something as something once in cameo and there's a good reason for that but we what you can do is add another usage. So the car could have this wheel and that could be called wheel one, or we could call that anything we'd like. We could call that front uh, driver side wheel. And then we could have another wheel that's the exact same kind of wheel, but it could be used in a different part of the car. So in this case, we could call this the front passenger side wheel. And I think you get the point where you could have four of these and you would then be saying that your car had four wheels and each of them were this type of wheel. So <clears throat> when you create this relationship here, this is called, in Cameo, that's called a directed composition. But in SysML, the real term for this is a composite association. So what we're saying is that this car, part of it is composed of this wheel. And whenever you create that directed composition or composite association in Cameo, Cameo actually automatically creates the part property for you when you're simply creating this relationship here. So that, that's something that it does for you, but that is not something that it would have to do, you can actually change that as a default value to where it doesn't do that. But typically, it's a nice thing that, that they've done to where all you have to do is create this relationship. The part property is then created and it's automatically typed by the target of that. So in this car, currently we're saying that there is a front driver side wheel and a front passenger side wheel. But those are the part properties. Uh, so we have two part properties. They're defined by one block, but then that doesn't really answer the question of uh, an instance. So what does it mean to have an instance of something? And really instances are great because they can be used in simulations uh, to, to show different values without actually affecting your architecture. So in this case, if we were to run a simulation, we'd be using this value as a default that's 20 inches as our diameter, that diameter could be used in other parametric equations. Maybe you're calculating your speed based off of the rotation of your crankshaft or something like that. Uh, if that were to change, obviously that would affect everything else. So 
if you didn't want to actually go in and change your architecture and the default values, what you could do is, is just use an instance of this car, and then you could set those instances to have their own values. So if you were to do that, what you could do is go up to your car block and go to tools and go to create instance. And in this case, it asks you, what would you like to bring in for that? And we're saying we'd like to bring in both of these wheels and notice we could toggle, we could change these default values for either one of these because we actually have two wheels in this car. They're just both the exact same type of wheel, right? They're defined by the same type of wheel because that's what a block is, is an element of definition. So the car is using two wheels and let, let's say for this instance, we just wanted to change the value of this to 19. And then this one, we also wanted to change the value to 19. Let's see, 19 there, 19 there. So we've set our instance values. And it's asking, where would you like to store this in your model? Let's just say anywhere is fine in the model. And we'll just do a finish on that. And notice it puts together this entire instance or configuration of your car. And it's using all of the parts of your car and all their definitions. However, it's using the values that you've set for these. So in this instance, or in this case, you could run simulations that would use all the parametrics that were using those value properties, except it would be defaulted to these values. So if we were to run a simulation here, what you should see down here is those values. So we'll say the diameter in this case is 19, and in this case is 19. And as I mentioned, all of those could be tied to constraints and other types of parametrics, but that would be, in this instance, that's what you would be using would be those values. So <clears throat> hopefully that helps with the, the idea there uh, to show the contrast to that. If we were to simply run the simulation from here, we should start out using the, all of the default values that we've set in the architecture. And that's what you see here is without using that instance, we're simply saying that we have defined this to have a default value of 20. But of course that could change during a simulation. It wouldn't change for, for this type of value property, but maybe for other value properties it would. Um, one other time where you may want to use instances is putting together different configurations of things. So what you've seen here is how you can uh, put together different or change different value properties. But let's say you had specific types of wheels. So let's say we wanted to make a subtype of a wheel or specialization of the wheel. What we could do is say that we have um, a, we'll call this a really, really great wheel. And then we'll have another one that'll be our not so great wheel. Uh, not so great wheel. And to make a subtype or a specialization of something, we typically use a generalization. And that means that this block is a subtype of this block. So we're saying that it's actually specialization of the wheel or a specific type of wheel. So in this case, if we were to open up the, spe the specification for one of these, what we'd see is if we look at the properties, it's inheriting the little carrot there is saying that we're inheriting the properties of that wheel being diameter in inches is 20 and nothing is really different there right unless we were to redefine that right so let's go back into the, the specification again and if we want to redefine that what we could do is say in in this specific wheel we're going to redefine this as having a default value of this 20 uh, we'll call this um, well, 15 inches, right? 
So our not so great wheel is 15 inches. Then a really great wheel will give that a different value. So we go to properties and highlight the row, redefine that. If you don't redefine that, what will happen is you'll actually affect the super type of that. So you'll actually change this one, even though you're intending to only change this one. So that's a great reason to always redefine when you're making specializations. So let's say in this case, our really great wheel is 22 inches. <clears throat> so at this point, what you can do, let's say we were to run a simulation just for an example. You might be asking yourself, well, which values will be used in this simulation if we were going to run the car? So we're going to run a simulation here. And notice we're still only seeing the wheel. We're not seeing either of these two wheels because these are, these are simply subtypes of wheels in this case. But what we can do is put together a configuration or an instance that would define the configuration and we would actually select one of these to use in place of that. So let's say we went to uh, the tools again, go back up to the car block, go to tools and create instance. And then get down to the part where we'd like to select the wheel. Notice it's asking us, well, for this wheel, which one would you like to use? And now we have a drop down, not only where we can put in different values, but we can select a completely different wheel altogether. So let's say that for this front driver side wheel, we'd like to use the really, really great wheel. And then, so we don't have a lopsided car, we'll go ahead and select that also really, really great wheel on the other side. And then we'll say finish. And this should create an instance. And in this instance, notice we've selected a really, really great wheel on both of these part properties. So if we were to run that simulation now, <clears throat> notice you'll see these default values are 22 because those types of wheels have those defaults as part of their definition. And that's a really neat way to put together configurations of things. If you'd like to, you could make an entire different configuration of a vehicle by simply going through and identifying, you know, specific types of things where you may have five different types of wheels that you'd like to use. And what you could do with that, especially if, is if you had parametrics connected to the values, you'd, you'd actually be able to see well, what if we would trade out and use something else? So that can be used for trade studies to say, I'd like to try out using this really, really great wheel in this simulation and see how it affects you know, our acceleration, for instance. And maybe you have an acceleration model that brings in that value property. And then you'd be able to see that in that instance, using this wheel as a specific type of a wheel would most likely produce different results. And if you were to have a configuration that actually used this other not so great wheel. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, and hopefully that, that helps to understand a little bit about the difference between elements of definition, elements of usage, and then also instances of those elements of definitions and usage. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.